AMA Thermal Barrier System Standards. Welcome to Building Knowledge 101. Gain essential knowledge about the range of AMA Thermal Barrier System Standards and the specific factors involved in each to achieve the standard. Now, I want to talk about some reference documents. Here's a couple of them listed here, some others here. These reference documents are probably in your specification in the reference documents at the beginning. But let me explain what these are. This is AMA TIR A806. Now, I mentioned composite frames. This one talks specifically about composite frames, how the material is stored, how the material is tested, how to handle the material, how to get rid of it when you're through with the material or when they're the leftovers. So this one talks about composite frames. So you think about pour into bridge material, polyurethane. This is one of the ones that addresses polyurethane and composite frames and testing mainly. Then AMA 507, this is a physical test of material where we're cycling the material through temperature changes from negative 20 to positive 180. What we're looking for is going through thermal cycles. We're measuring the results of dry shrinkage and shear upon the frames. And when we talk about dry shrinkage, during thermal cycles, in the past, pour and bridge has shrunk a little bit at the edges. So when you think about two frames coming together and they've got a two-part polyurethane thermal break, if they were to start to shrink over time due to thermal cycles, you would have a gap where they met each other. So here you can see an extrusion on the left doesn't have any means of stopping a dry shrinkage. The frame on the right has interlocks. So when we go through thermal cycles, see the frame on the left, the pour into bridge dry shrink a little bit, uh, sliding back from the edges, which would create a gap. But here where we have mechanical interlocks, then the aluminum is crimped into the polyurethane before it's poured in, and that locks the frames in place, locks the polyurethane in place, so that there's no room for it to shrink back. So if you look at this illustration here, it better shows you how the aluminum is crimped down into the chamber or cavity where the polyurethane is poured in, so that way when the polyurethane pours in and hardens up, there's no room for it to pull back. It can't shrink back because it's locked in place. So Amr prescribes that all manufacturers using pour into bridge have a means of mechanically locking the frames in there to prevent shear from occurring and also to prevent dry shrinkage. Here's another AMA test. Our standard is QAG-1-09. Now, this one talks specifically about polyurethane, which is used for pour into bridge thermal breaks, how to store it, how to handle it, how to dispose of it. This also has the thermal cycling in it because what we're again looking for is dry shrinkage. So AMA requires all manufacturers to control dry shrinkage and have a means of preventing shear from occurring when they're using two-part polyurethane. Then AMA 1503-9, is a test, a physical test of frame and glass to evaluate the U, U value of the system and the CRF. Now, I haven't mentioned CRF up to this point, but let's talk about that a little bit. CRF is condensation resistance factor. So the, the CRF of a frame is a rating that shows you the ability of the frame to resist buildup of condensation on the inside. So as a designer, when you start out, you're gonna to wanna to look at a chart like this, which shows the United States, and it shows the outside uh, average cold temperature during the winter. So if we were, say, here in Detroit, we'd follow this line around then realize that our average outside cold or the lowest outside cold is going to potentially be zero degrees. So we need to design our frames and the condensation resistance factor based on that. So we're going to go to this chart and along the left column, you can see running out vertically, it says outside air temperature. Now we picked Detroit which is going to have an outside low a potential of zero degrees. Then running across the top in red is relative humidity. So when you're designing a building, you know on the interior you're designing for a particular relative humidity. If you were designing a uh, filling station or a convenience store, you wouldn't really worry about it because the doors are opening and closing so much. You're, you're going to have a hard time controlling interior relative humidity. So you don't have to worry about it. If you were working on a hospital, though, you'd want to have a much higher. You'd be up here around 50% because you want to cut down on the potential of static electricity. So by increasing your relative humidity on the interior, you reduce the probability of static shock. Typical office building is going to fall somewhere in this range, 25% to 35% interior relative humidity. So let's say we're using 35. So where those two lines meet, that is going to be the recommended minimum CRF for that application. So you can see as you increase in relative humidity, 
the recommended CRF number goes up. So when we're talking CRF or condensation resistance factor, the higher the number, the better. When you're talking about U factors, which is a thermal performance, the lower the number, the better. So that's where CRF comes in. And this next AMA standard is QAG-2. And this is looking at polyamide. So I talked about two-part polyurethane earlier. AMA has uh, standards written for testing it, handling it. They also do for polyamide. So this talks about inserting extrusions together, how to join them, how to get a good combining of the extrusions with the polyurethane so that they're combined together and bonded and working together, creating composite thermal breaks. Then AMA 507. AMA 507 is probably the most common document you're going to use for evaluating thermal performance of frames because what this does is a computer simulation that allows manufacturers to show different levels of glass performance in their frames and the resulting u factor of each of those combinations so as an architect using this if you have to have a u factor of say 0 0.32 you could go to the ama 507 test and go down the different glass options till you find one that resulted of a system U factor of 0 0.32, and that would be your base starting point, then you could show additional improvement after that. So AMA 507 is the most common thermal testing. It also allows you to compare systems very easily because all manufacturers are gonna have tests in accordance with AMA 507, and you can compare very easily systems doing an apples to apples comparison. AMA 507 also brings in CRF or condensation resistance factor, solar heat gain coefficient, visible light transmission, and air leakage. So a lot of municipalities and regions across North America do accept AMA. In some cases, you might be in an area where NFRC or the National Administration Rating Council is required. So they have a very similar testing standard to AMA. Just depends on which one is being required in the jurisdiction where you're working. So this is NFRC 100 and it tests the U factors for systems, which is a combination of the glass and frame together. This is AMA NFRC 200 and this is looking at visible light transmission through the frames. And then this is NFRC 500, and this is looking at condensation resistance. So these kind of parallel AMA 507. So again, know what jurisdiction you're in and which codes are required, either testing in accordance with AMA or testing in accordance with NFRC. Now, if you're using AMA, you'll simply print out the AMA 507 test document. But if you're using NFRC, there are two different certifications that might be required. One of them is a manufacturer certification. And with that, you're gonna to go to the manufacturer and say, this is the glass performance we're using. What is the system performance going to be? And the manufacturer will print out a document in accordance with NFRC that says the system performance will be this. So that's a manufacturer certification. In some cases, some jurisdictions, they require a third party certification. And in that case, there's an actual physical testing of the frame and the glass once they're installed. So a third party would come out, do an evaluation, test the frames, and certify the thermal performance of the combination of glass and frame. So know where you're located and then what governing body or, or testing documents would be required for that location. That is all we have time for in this video. If you'd like to watch more of our 101 video series, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Conair Company, Inc.